Welcome back to my shed. In this episode, we're going to try and uh, bring Kenny back alive. So in the last episode, we rebuilt the small block. Now there's just one le thing left to do, and that's uh, mount the freshly coated cylinder, the piston, the head, and uh, mount all the side pieces like carb and exhaust again. And then hopefully we should be able to get this thing started. First, before we mount the cylinder, we are going to check the ring, ring gap from the new rings for the RD50M piston. We have two of these. So how do you measure ring gap? You put them in, in the cylinder, just by hand. Be careful not to break them. And then use the piston and push them in. I usually push them in just until the uh, bottom groove is level with the cylinder. Why do you push it in with the piston? Because that makes sure that the ring is actually level and it's not uh, at an angle because that gives you a bad reading. What you then do is uh, take a feeler gauge and check the ring gap of the ring. So here you can see we have the ring. This is a 0.3 millimeter feeler gauge. This fits perfect. The 0.35 millimeters fits barely. It has a lot of resistance, so I think it's something in between that. I think that is actually a little bit on the high side. I think for the FS1, we need a 0.2 millimeter ring gap. So if it is 0.3, then uh, I think it's a little bit high, but that I don't think we will lose a lot of compression by this. Just maybe a little bit, but we'll have to see when the engine is running. So that's the first one. That's perfectly fine. Now the second one. If the ring gap is too small, you take a little bit of sandpaper or a little file and you sand a little bit of the top or at least of the edges. You remove a little bit of material from the edges. Okay. There you go. They are exactly the same. This one fits good. And then this one will probably have... Uh, it's actually... Hmm. This one also has no resistance. So I think this ring is uh, a bit higher than 0.35, maybe 0.36 or 37. But my feeler gauges only go by 0.5, so I'm not able to measure them that accurate. 0.4 millimeter doesn't fit, so it's in between 0.4 and 0.5, uh, 0.35, sorry. So what I'm going to do is take the smallest ring gap, so this one that had 0.3 millimeters, I'm going to put that one on the top. Why? I'm not, not sure if it matters that much, but just for ease of mind. So mount the piston rings. Be careful not to break them because these are fragile. There is a special plier that you can use to open piston rings, but I don't have it. So I just go old school and use my fingers. Crap, the piston rings don't fit. Oh, come on. Okay, so I've been measuring around. These new piston rings fit the old piston perfectly. So these are probably the correct piston rings for the DX piston. But the M piston probably has a slightly tighter or a slightly less thick piston ring, so these don't fit. The new 
piston rings do fit the old piston, so I'm debating on whether or not I should reuse the old piston for now, just to get this thing running and broken in. And maybe then find the correct piston rings or not. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to give uh, the guy that ordered my piston rings a call and see if he can find something or find other information or if he can find other rings rather and see what this second piston ring tells me about the gap oh yeah <laughs> 0.95 One millimeter. Yeah, this one doesn't fit, so 0 0.95, which is way too much. So these old piston rings are definitely toast. The only thing I could do to get this thing fired up for today is reuse the old piston with the new piston rings, and that will probably work. But am I going to reuse this piston? Okay, I'm going to make some calls and get back. Okay, so a little update. Just uh, got on the phone with some shops. I did mount the old piston with the new piston rings in and everything actually fits perfect. It seals up really, really, really good. But um, I really have to contain myself from not mounting it like this and going uh, just firing this thing up but i think i'm going to go for one last search uh to the shop that um, might be able to help so i'm going to take everything to the shop tomorrow because it's closed on monday and uh, hopefully they will be able to find some new piston rings if not then i think i will have to reuse this old piston so i just got back from the other shop we were also unable to find fitting piston ring piston rings, so not sure what this piston is from or for. It looks like a ghost piston. I don't know. Maybe it's just a crappy replica piston. Not sure. So the plan of attack for now is to run the old piston. The guy in the shop also said that it actually looks fine. The side walls are good, so. If the piston rings seal up okay, then there should be no problem. So I'm going to do that for now. And I'm going to try and look for another piston. I have been looking around. Maybe the piston for the latest model RD, I think it's the MX, um, has a piston that might fit. But I could already tell by the pictures, the transfer ports are square. So that piston will need a lot of modification but I will definitely investigate that so maybe other people that are looking for new pistons uh, might find a solution so the plan for now is mount the old piston sadly enough with the new piston rings but I think it should be fine So we got the piston with the new piston pin, a brand new needle bearing. And I've also got my pot of two stroke oil. So I'm going to start up with lubricating the crankcase, the big end bearing and some for the small end bearing, the needle bearing. This one goes first and then we put the piston on top. Make sure you put it in on the right side. There is a little arrow on the top hat here. This uh, shows the exhaust port. There you go. Perfect. 
Don't forget this little piston clip. And make sure that the pin points down. And now for the big part, the new cylinder. We got the cylinder. I've just mounted the exhaust studs and the inlet manifold. Nothing too crazy. And this piston ring is wrong. Wait, is it? Yes. Next up, head gasket. So head gaskets and the cylinder head. So again, tighten these in a cross pattern and in a couple of stages. So now what I'm going to do before we get actually started, I'm going to just pour some extra two stroke oil in. In the spark plug hole and I'm going to use the kickstarter a couple of times without spark plug so it doesn't build any compression but it gets the two-stroke oil nice and round and to make sure that the piston rings don't snag on anything is coming out of the exhaust port but that's normal let's put the car back on and the exhaust and hopefully try to start it Spark plug is back in, there's oil in the transmission, fuel is in, let's put the choke on, ignition on, let's see if she wants to fire up. Oh wait, what? Oh! It's not spark plug, I forgot to plug in the electrical. We've just put all the wires back in. Let's see if we have spark now. That might help. Yes, perfect spark. Let's try again. Oh! <laughs> Come on, baby. I'm going to let her idle for a minute or two and then let her cool back down because this is a fresh cylinder just so we have to respect the, the break-in periods and the break-in methods. I'll explain to you in a bit. So I've let it idle for a minute or two. It's gotten a little bit hot, not nothing to worry about. I can still hold my hand on it. So for break-in method I'm not going to claim this is the method or the best method or the only method, it's just a method. So what I do with a fresh cylinder and new piston rings is just fire it up for the first time. Let it uh, idle for a couple minutes just so it gets hot a bit. Then let it cool down Then do that again but for a little bit longer. And then maybe do that two or three times just so that the piston rings can start seeding in the cylinder. And then I'm going to make a small drive around the block nothing too crazy just so it gets a little bit more hot and then i'm going to build that up take trips from one kilometer to two five ten and then i'm going to drive it for example for half an hour and then build that up drive slowly 
until the first 100 kilometers. So don't go all crazy, stay in low RPMs just for the first 100 kilometers. Then you can start building it a, a little bit up, but not still nothing too crazy. And then at 500 Ks, you can start uh, going full throttle for short periods of time and then just build everything up just until 1000 kilometers. I'm not saying this is the method, but it's a method that I use and I've had a lot of success with. So I'll check back to you in a minute or 10 when this thing cools down a bit, fire it back up and uh, yeah, this thing is back alive. I'm super happy. I can't wait to get this thing on the road for some first kilometers. So I'm back, the bike has cooled down a bit. I went ahead and mounted the ignition case or the ignition cover. The chain is back up, still have to tension everything. But uh, everything has cooled down, so let's see if she wants to fire back up. Give her a little bit of gas to fire up. That's probably because there's still a lot of resistance the, on the piston rings. But she runs nicely. She's a bit loud. That's also because there is no air filter on the carburetor. So I have to remount that. I'm going to let her idle for a couple of minutes and then check back with you guys. We just did another heating cycle. It's actually pretty hot now. So I left it running for maybe five to ten minutes, just at idle, not no gas. I managed to burn myself on the exhaust, which is already <laughs> getting pretty hot. But yeah, I guess that's it for now. I will do a couple of more idle cycles. And hopefully in the next episode, we might be able to do a little trip. So I will definitely get back to you guys then. So if you want to see that, uh, definitely hit subscribe so you get notified. And also leave a like if uh, you thought this was helpful or nice to watch at. See you guys in the next one. Bye.